good idea when using this technique of having you know multiple overlapping over overlapping tetrahedrons which are using additive color to produce this kind of glowing effect it's a good idea to randomize their rotation just to make them well you know random um, then we apply a uh, dynamic material silver rock spray rocket which we went through in the material editor and as I said that just starts off on bright white it's using additive color so as the particles overlap they all add together to produce a really bright luminous effect and obviously as it fades off uh, due to, to transparency increasing levels of transparency that brightness decreases more and more and uh, you know at the end of their life their, their lifespan the particles will disappear so that just makes sure that a the dynamic material works the particle age map works and also makes sure that the rocket uh, doesn't produce a trail that builds up to being you know hundreds of thousands of particles for no for no uh, good reason so the particles which uh, test true if we go back up here um, these have started falling downwards and they explode so then they're sent down here to uh, the trails um, event and this produces an explosion you can see there's a spawn which is once it's spawning 350 particles uh, using a variation of 30% so we just get some variation in the number of particles to be honest it wouldn't make much of a difference um, you know um, how much variation we have there but again I like to use as much variation as possible uh, to try and tailor the effect to make it look you know realistic uh, wherever possible you know variation does uh, give us this random effect and uh, randomness in particles is a good thing you know it stops this regularity uh, creeping in there then we're using speed which is uh, random horizontal there was very little uh, control I had over the speed of the particles. This is one of the problems that I was talking about for producing effects like heart shapes and logo shapes on the particles when they explode. Um, if you wanted to produce the shape of a heart, you'd want to probably the particles to be, you know, getting their speed from this heart shape. But, you know, without using scripting, you can't put a former up there from the particles to be, you know, ex birthed from. Um, so therefore, you know, um, I've got a choice of random horizontal um, or random 3D or I can't use icon arrow out because the icon's down on the ground. Um, I can't use icon center out or any of the icon options because um, they're all based on the icon and really, you know, you can't have the icon in one place um, and have uh, the speed effect relative to it. Um, you'd, you'd really have to have the icon um, at the position of each particle as it explodes um, and you can't do that, as I said, without scripting. Inherit previous that had some um, options which actually would have been quite interesting. With that, I could have actually had the particles um, explode, travel onwards in the direction that the rocket was tra traveling when it actually exploded, which don't forget would generally be downwards. Um, and then you could use a lot of uh, randomness uh, variation in the uh, divergence uh, value and actually have the particles diverge out quite a lot from that direction, that vector. Um, in the end I didn't actually try that effect because it kind of looked stupid because you had your particles being fired downwards towards the ground generally and uh, that looked uh, pretty silly as I said. And then you have gravity, you know, pulling your, grav your particles downward, that's pretty obvious. We've got uh, wind large and wind small, just gives a sort of randomness to our particles as they fall downwards. These, you know, these are the particles in the big bloom of, of particles which explode outwards when the rocket goes goes up. Um, drag, again, you know, as I discussed earlier, that's just, just to stop the particles accelerating too much and getting too much energy in them. That keeps them nice and slow so that they, they fall downwards, you know, in the, you know, in the way you would expect uh, sort of firework particles to do. Again, particulates, I've got the tetrahedron in there, uh, quite small. Um, I've got the material, silver spray bloom. You can see here, instead of still, uh, silver spray rocket, this gives the sparkling effect, which I discussed earlier. Random rotation on the particles again, as I said, very uh, important. Then we delete the particles by their age, um, and we're just displaying them as text. Um, Red Bloom is basically the same kind of system. And then the only thing interesting which I could say probably about Crimson Dawn is that um, what Crimson Dawn does is when actually you get the, the explosion, you get the particle sent off down to this sort of uh, uh, switcher event here. And what we do here, we, we spawn more particles once. You can see we spawn off 150. Um, we split off 66% of them over here. Uh, this goes over to this event here. And that leaves us with 33% and uh, the 33% then comes down here 
50% of that, 33% is sent in.